And now, here's the breakdown with Justin Hunt. Jess, what's up, man? Jude, what's going on, brother? How are you? I'm awesome. You're up in San Francisco? Up in San Francisco. Got the Empire Holiday Party, Empire Retreat this week. It's all happening. That's nice, dog. Y'all go on retreats? Yeah, it, is, it is, man. Yo, Empire scale so big this year. They open up this new luxurious studio space, artist haven compound. I don't even know what to call it. It's so dope. So it's our first time as a company seeing it. And they flew in everybody from around the world to, you know, celebrate the year that was for Empire Records, man. It's dope. Well, congratulations. Uh, I know, I know you was grinding over there, and it's a, it's a trip well-deserved. Yeah, definitely, man. Big shout-out to Gazi and Nima, man. I've been on a, learn, a learning spree this year, so I really appreciate them. All right, we're going to talk about the winners and the losers of 2018. Winners and losers 2018. The first winner I have for this year is Meek Mill. Meek Mill, man, a year ago, Meek Mill was arrested for parole violation. It looked like he was going to have to serve two to four years in state prison because he got caught uh, riding dirt bikes in New York City. Now, it's illegal to ride dirt bikes in New York City, but this was another parole violation. He ended up sitting down for five months in April he was released from jail, and now he's become not only one of the most successful artists this year, his album Champion came out two weeks ago, debuted at number one, sold 200,000 units first week, nice. one of the highest totals of his career. He also has celebrity clout like we haven't seen. The Free Meat Mill campaign was all over the place, had Dr. J out there supporting Meek Mill, Kevin Hart, Robert Kraft, the owner of the Patriots, supporting Meek Mill. And not only those things, but the biggest one is now he's the, the face of a predatory prison system all in the span of a year. I don't know who, when I think of winners in 2018, Meek Mill is the first person that comes to mind. Yeah, when you put it that way, I didn't even realize all of that shit. I thought he was still in jail. <laughs> right. I mean, yo, I mean, this is one of the biggest Sh- shows stuff. you what I pay attention to. Jesus Christ. And he had that whole ass judge, too. Didn't she want him to do like she wanted him to do like some some uh, s- like special songs and he wouldn't do it. So she threw the book at his ass. She wanted him to sing on Bended Knee by Boys to Men. Judge Brinkley. Yeah. Yeah, that's... Philly. It was it was an extreme situation. The thing I also think is unique about me is I also look at this. Part of me feels like he's the luckiest rapper in recent years, because to me this is also a big win for Jay Z. Jay Z has always had an affinity for for rappers from Philly. Yeah, most of the guys he signed to Rock Rockefeller were the Philly guys. He put his festival in Philly last year. He wrote an editorial in Time Magazine last June talking about how he is uh, he is going to war with the predatory bail industry. He put out the Khalif Browder documentary about the kid who was locked up in Rikers under no charges and ended up committing suicide. Mm. So Meek Mill falls right at the core of all the things that Jay Z is about. <laughs> Bill right. rapper uh, uh, caught up in a predatory prison system. And he signed the Rock Nation. So this is a real big win for Jay-Z, in my opinion, as well, because the relaunch of uh, Meek Mill's career is, 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 has been really special to see this year. And when that shit happened, uh, both you and I were like, eh, man, you can't be fucking up like that. On uh, you, you can't put yourself in a situation where they're going to fucking fuck you over. I'll be the first to admit that I'm critical of Meek Mill. I still am critical of Meek Mill. I definitely don't think that people should be going back to jail for small parole violations like riding a dirt bike in New York City. But I also think it's really easy not to ride a dirt bike someplace that's illegal. I don't really have sympathy for that. (laughs) I feel like to some degree, some of these violations were just, you know, feeling were unnecessary. Yeah, And I definitely have my questions about whether he's the best face for this movement, but... He is the face. 
he's the face, and, and I'm happy for him, but I'm, I'm not running away from any criticism that I've ever thrown at me because I still feel that way. Okay. I just think he had a, he was a big winner in 2018. All right, give me a loser. Kanye West. This is the first time Kanye West looks like he's on the other side of the bell curve. Now, we've seen Kanye say all kinds of crazy stuff at various points in his career. We saw him grab microphones from Taylor Swift. We've seen a lot of these things. And one thing that always happened right after Kanye said something crazy was he dropped great music. He was always getting accolades after he kicked some word vomit. We didn't see that this year in the same way. So Kanye shows up with the MAGA hat. Kanye slips up and however you want to word it, says slavery is a choice or whatever. Then he drops five albums in a row. The Daytona album is critically acclaimed. That was Pusha T's. The Pusha T album. His album wasn't, yay. The album with uh, Kid Cudi, Kid See Ghosts, People love that album. Uh, the Nas album, nope, that wasn't. That was critically panned. And then the Tiana Taylor album had a crazy rollout. Later that summer, no, and none of those albums did particularly well in the charts outside of Ye, which I think had the biggest anticipation around it. I think Kids See Ghost streams is streaming better now. Later that summer, in August, Kanye is apologizing on Chicago radio says he's going to be a better Kanye for the future. He's going to be better for the city of Chicago. Three months or two months ago, he came out and said he's going to stop talking about politics altogether because he feels like he's being used by Candace Owens and some of the people that he was celebrating over the course of this year. I felt like the biggest thing he was doing this for was for Yeezy to sell sneakers. Like, you know, Michael Jordan said, pumpkins buy shoes too. I can get behind the logic. But here's the thing that's interesting. Yeezys look shakier than ever right now. They just did the re-release, and they're still stock in stores. Now, granted, that makes sense to a degree because they put more out in the streets. Yeah. But they're not selling out like they used to. But they're also not as cool as they were. They've kind of been replaced by Off-White, which was Virgil Abloh, his, uh, his friend and, to a degree, protege. But the Off-White brand is now the hottest sneakers out. There's all kinds of articles, YouTube videos, people breaking down, analyzing whether Yeezy, the brand is falling off. So from a music side, he hasn't performed the way we normally see him after he does something crazy. But the one thing he seems to only to care the most about, not looking as sharp as it was even six months ago. Kanye West. When I think of people who lose in 2018, Kanye West. I actually like that Kanye took a different uh, – I like that Kanye, whether I agreed with him or not, I like that he fucking took a different stance that was popular in rap. Uh, I never liked his shoes. Um, and the – Trying to tackle five albums in five weeks is kind of kind of crazy, so yeah, I, I I get I get that. And and look, I didn't even check. I didn't check. The only one I checked for was the Push T, which I thoroughly enjoyed. So that was a great record all the way around. I don't think that you forgot you forgot the part where he fucking like was ODing, walking down the street ODing on fucking uh, Drake and everybody. Like that was another. Right. And I was like, what are you doing, bro? Like. Like that was the other thing. I mean, you know, he. I think he kind of had to say something, but he's walking down Chicago, dropping these videos, getting mad at Drake for letting people think that he smacked bellies with Kim Kardashian, calling out Nick Cannon for talking about, you know, uh, Kanye's relationship with Kim. I mean, he looks insecure. Well, I think he is insecure. And, and, and I, does, but but I yeah, think that's right. I think I think that's what people liked about Kanye West was I always just felt like he I feel like he's uh, just an insecure artist guy and sometimes that sometimes you're gonna get some really fucking cool shit off of that and other times you're gonna get some real shitty shit 
Uh, and this year was a this year was a bad one for him. This isn't the best one, man. And I, I think it'll be really interesting to see the urgency people have behind the Yeezy brand next year. That's something I'm looking forward to looking towards 2019 how it, people respond to brand easy well that's because a, that, if especially i think i think um w- scarcity is scarcity is is what is attractive so if he's flooding the market with his fucking shoes they're, they're no they're no longer scarce anymore they're uh, yeah i'll just go i'll go i'll go, I'll go get them next week so yeah, I mean exactly. If he's trying to scale, I think I think he would have been better taking the supreme approach and dropping a limited number like he has been doing. The other thing too is you, we're not talking about the bootlegs, bro. There's so many fucking bootleg Yeezys out right now, mm-hmm. dog. Like that's just eating away at his shit, dude. Like fucking when I was in New York, I saw there was just bootleg Yeezys for days and days next to the next to the fucking next to the gucci hats it was it was it was crazy <laughs> right yeah i mean it'll be interesting to see you're right i mean you know he's removing a lot of the scarcity around the product i think there's maybe a financial component that makes sense there but the same thing you know supreme's actually undergone with the same under the threat under the same thing because they have a new financial private equity firm i can't remember which pe shop owns supreme now yeah but they uh, are trying to get Supreme to put out more products so that they can make more money faster. So, and we'll and see. and Supreme ain't even Supreme no more. There's some other brand that's like Supreme. You know what I mean? There's like I'm not right. cool enough to know, but like there's there's some other brand that only drops fucking twelve things. Like I I couldn't believe it. Supreme dropped sold Supreme bricks for eighty dollars. They were just bricks, <laughs> and people stood in line for them shits. It was just fucking amazing. But like, wow, yeah, right, fucking. I, th- I think that's the way to go. I'm looking at the off white. I'm looking at the off whites. Uh, yeah, they're pretty cool. Yeah, and you know they're they're basically shoes we already love with you know really bland type font written on them that say air or whatever. But they're dope. <laughs> Somehow it works. You know what I mean. And so you know the way that Virgil Abloh markets them as he sends them obviously to all the most successful people and you know i'm listening to songs and people are talking about off-white more than they're talking about you yeah yeah all right let's uh let's go who's the next winner big winner eminem big reason eminem is a big winner this year is i love the way that he bounced back from the reaction he received off of revival it looked like for the first time we had seen a crack in Eminem's fan base last year, a year ago. After he put out Revival, people didn't like it when he got political. People didn't you know, gravitate towards the music that was on that project in the same way. And he bounced back hard body 2018 with Kamikaze going back to all the things that we loved originally about Eminem. This is raps, crazy flows, talking shit about everybody called out all these people, got people to respond to Eminem, put MGK back in the corner where he deserved to be, and had another number one record this year. And the thing that was cool about Kamikaze was he also showed different angles or aspects to his life and his vulnerability that we hadn't seen before. He he really talked about the breakup of D12 in a real personal way, for example, as well. I think if you're ever behind, like, what does any artist do, or what should any artist do when their fan base isn't reacting the way that they expected them to? Put on another beat, get back to the mission. Yeah. And, yeah, and, and it goes, it, and I think you're right, like, uh, you know, um, it. The when he when he uh, when he got political, it it alienated some of his fan base, and they just weren't there to support him. And it, and I feel like he got he got a lot of that fan base back with the Kamikaze project. Um, yeah, I mean, him and Kanye are really interesting, right? Because 
none of their fan bases liked the way they got political. And they reacted in a way that is probably predictable, but staunchly nevertheless. Right, Kanye fans definitely don't want you going MAGA. You know what I mean? That's not a surprise. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So to see the way Eminem responded and the music he put out, big winner 2018. Yeah, he fucking kamikaze just was a monster from front to back. From front to back. Uh, you got a winner and a loser. Winner and loser, Takashi 6 9 this is one of the most fantastic stories that I remember in hip hop in a very long time. One a year ago, most people didn't even know about the Kasha Six Nine. The first track, Gunmo, doesn't really go live, doesn't get added to playlists, isn't really streaming well until October 29th, two thousand and seventeen. Since then, the kids now he he put up a a dozen or so top ten songs. He became one of the most known, if not the most known, new artists in hip hop. Arguably the hottest artist out of hip hop from the, out of New York in hip hop all year except for Cardi B. Mm. He goes on the Breakfast Club, puts on a trolling clinic, out trolls Charlemagne, has Charlemagne on the defensive, which is something that isn't common to see in that forum, for example. He ends up he goes on a spree around the country picking fights with every local Every local gangster in every market seems to come away unscathed. He's sitting on top of the world like Brandy and Mace. And then, a month ago, gets arrested on racketeering and drug charges. Now he's sitting behind bars. This is a... The, the rise and fall was so fast. Now, there is... You know, the details around this case we've talked about in the show already... He may be able to get out. You never know. He's not scheduled to go to court for his hearing until Labor Day to Labor Day weekend, two thousand nineteen. Hmm. So this story is going to go for a while. But in twelve months, he went from nobody to everybody to jail. Somehow, yeah. it's awesome and awful at the same time. Yeah, he really, he really. Um... He put on a trolling clinic, and he's he's uh he he is the the fucking for better or for worse. He's like the fucking punk rock gangster rap for thirteen year old suburb kids. Like that's 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 who you guys got this guy. So congratulations. <laughs> I know they had, they had, they had, they had X too. They had X X X from Tatiana. Yeah, piece. I was a. I don't. I don't know what that says about. Theory. I don't know. I don't know if that means uh, he's awesome or they suck. But it's <laughs> one of the two. Um, I you know I would like to throw in a winner loser. Um, as actually fucking Machine Gun Kelly, because I never heard one of his fucking songs, and he opened for Fallout Boy and. And Eminem had to fucking diss him, <laughs> so like, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so there you like, um, that was uh, that was probably the most shine he was gonna get for a very long time, um, in taking a loss. Like, not bad, not not fucking bad. Like, word up, yeah, you know what I mean. Like, I don't. I don't I'm not a fan. I don't fuck with them. But like that was that I never would have imagined it uh, happening like that for that dude. Fucking follow boy, dog. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> right. <laughs> I was just. I love the video of, of uh, MGK in the restaurant and the M fan comes up. <laughs> Starts talking shit to MGK. MGK's like, dude, get out of here, man. Come on, man. Enough's enough. For I didn't even see that shit. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> John, see if you can find the video. If you can just go to YouTube and say uh Eminem fan uh walks up on MGK, you should be able to find it. <laughs> but it was one of the funniest videos I saw all year. I know MGK's gonna have a 
he's had a hard time going outside since that. Yeah, and that's and, and that's the thing too. Like that, uh, like you could tell, like it hurt it hurt his heart in, in the Breakfast Club interview. He was really in his fucking he was in his feelings. Like he yeah. probably he probably shouldn't have talked. He probably shouldn't have went out in public for a while after that because <laughs> right. he really looked like. <laughs> He really looked like a piece of him was taken apart. Definitely. Uh, yeah, we got a. Uh, you also have some winners, Cardi B and Royce the Five Nine as well. Royce is Royce, man. Royce is. It's so interesting because there's a stigma, the stereotype out there that once artists go sober or once they, you know, they stop partying or they grow up or they change their lifestyle or they age, all of a sudden they're not dope anymore. Their skills deplete. They're not high. And Royce is the exact opposite. He's spit more viciously now since he's been clean and it's littered in his catalog and his storytelling and his bars have still advanced in a way that still brings the listener in. Book of Ryan is one of the best albums this year. I just think Royce is in the zone right now, man. It's great to see. Yeah, Layers and Book of uh, Book of Ryan, like just a great back to back um album. Prime, you can't forget Prime, man. Oh yeah, Prime and Prime. But, but um the 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 two things that really stuck out, the early Royce could always spit, but he never really he he wouldn't get vulnerable and in Layers and in in Book of Ryan, like he got vulnerable, and it to me, I think it really paid off. A hundred percent, man. Um, I also have Pusha T. Cardi B. I think you know Cardi B kind of goes without without saying much. I mean, she's ubiquitous this year. My favorite thing about Cardi B is how she's just been giving Nicki Minaj hell all year. She's been breaking records, women for women rappers. Nicki ain't done that. She's been. Uh, she's up for album of the year, rap album of the year. Nicki's never been up for those before. Mm-hmm. And when they actually got into a fight at the Met Gala or wherever that was, and Nicki was up there giving an excuse, she was saying, she was like, oh, well, I'm just over here. You know you got dragged by my girl. I'll stand against the wall. And Cardi just snaps back quick, gets her on the gram, is like, what are you talking about? Chun Li talking about you over here standing against the wall. Chun Li, the street fighter. Fuck out of here. You know what I mean? Just her energy, her reaction time, the way she interacts with her fans. And her album is really good. It's like one of my three favorite albums this year. If there's one knock against Cardi, is that she doesn't write a rap, but she admits that. And she gives her ghost writer props. So it's hard to take anything from her. She had a great year. There it is, Cardi B. Yo, you know, I, um, I, for the Pusha T and Drake shit, like people might say Pusha T won that uh won that exchange, but that fucking everybody and their mama was doing the Kiki challenge for months on yeah. on, on Instagram. It's like I f- it feels like the dude's bulletproof. Like it doesn't even matter. Like like it it doesn't fucking even matter whether he wins or loses. Like Drake still do, do you know how many fucking key like do you know how many Kiki challenges I saw? It was, it was fucking <laughs> mind boggling, dude. Like he's it's so it's uh, I agree with you. I, I'm not bad. I mean, control. No, that, go ahead. What are you gonna say? Yeah, I mean, you know, two things real quick. One, I think that the thing that was dope about the Pusha T Drake battle is Pusha T found a, a way to say something different about Drake that we hadn't seen other people approach on a big level yet, and. He painted him as a deadbeat dad in blackface, but also messed up his Adidas campaign. So he took money out the guy's pocket, too, which I think is dope. But then Drake Drake is starting to look like the bank. You ever watch The Wire? You ever see that show, The Wire? Yeah. Stringer Bell was really trying to get to the point where they could be the bank, where they get bigger than the drug money, they get bigger than the street-level stuff, they get up there in city senator distribution levels they could be the, just the bank <laughs> yeah. where that they, they're they're teflon you can't touch them drake's starting to look like the bank man i mean there's even the way that his when he had to go back and rewrite portions of scorpion after the you know push a t battle went down the subliminals in there are heavily aimed at kanye 
So yeah, he might have taken the L to push a T, but he's now he's giving Kanye hell. Mm. He's got fans out there putting bars together, coming up with the blueprint on how Drake potentially smack bellies with Kim K. He got Kanye screaming that, yo, if you know my wife called herself Kiki, why are you gonna make a song about it? <laughs> you know, like it's I don't understand. You know what, Kanye? Like, if I was Kanye, I wouldn't be that upset about, like, like if if my wife got famous for sucking Ray J's dick. Like, like I'd be like, oh, all right, great, she fucked another rapper. Who cares? You're, like, I don't, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be in my feelings as much as he is about that shit. He really let it bother. I, I, I think. I feel the same way too, and I agree. Especially, you got to know who your wife is, man. Yeah. You know? But on the flip side, that's got like it is. It's still your wife, and now you got other grown men in the streets talking about your wife, and you know them. Yeah. You know that's 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 a little different to yeah. me. It is. Well, well, well said, um, Just uh, Thank you for calling in with the winners and losers. This is. Uh, this has been a great year with you, and uh, I think it's. I think you, you guys are just going to crush all next year. I can't wait to see what you guys do. Likewise, man, Jude. Man, I can't. I have a, a very short list of advocates in the, over the course of my career that have, you know, really stood by me, really stood their necks out for me, and always kept it one thousand percent, man. And you're right there on top, man. I really appreciate you, man. It's been a great year. And I'm excited to see you back healthy and, and everything. Got all the, the the health issues behind you. And I can't wait to see all the incredible stuff that you do in 2019. Thanks, bro. I appreciate you, man. All right. That's all Justin right. Hunt, the company man on everything. Let's go. Mike check. Peace. Peace.